Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing all of the things that I knit this summer. So this June, I got back into knitting. I haven't knitted in a few years and I have been going a little bit crazy with it. And I have this enormous stack of finished knitted objects that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Everything that I knit is from June until now. And I know that technically summer is not over yet. There are still a few weeks of summer, but honestly this year I'm kind of done with summer. I am ready for fall. So I just wanted to share all of these things that I knit and then move on to my fall projects because I am really ready for it this year. Not everything that I knit will be summer knits. It's just everything that I knit this summer, but there are quite a few summer garments, things like tank tops and t-shirts as well as some winter projects. All of the patterns that I use that I'm going to be talking about today will be listed in the description box and I'll put links if I can find them. So yeah, let's just get right into it. I'm not going to be going in any specific order of when I knit things, but I did want to show these two first things because these garments are from when I was just starting to get back into knitting and I really just wanted to knit with what I had from my stash. I didn't want to go out and buy new yarn. And mostly what I had in my stash was acrylic yarn because I didn't know much about like natural fibers, about wool, and all of the beneficial properties that natural fibers have. So all of this yarn was stuff that I had purchased back when I just wanted to do something for fun that was a little bit crafty and I wasn't really making a lot of big garments. So anyway, these two things are going to be acrylic garments and I consider them kind of like my learning pieces. They're not really my favorite things, but I think that I learned a lot doing them and I learned also what I don't like, which I think is important going forward. So the first thing I have is this sweater. And to be fair, I did not knit this whole thing this spring. I had started it probably a couple of years ago and I think what I had left was maybe one sleeve and then I had to seam the whole thing together because this is actually a sweater that is not seamless. You have to knit all of the pieces separately. So you do the front and the back and each sleeve separately. And then at the end, you seam everything together to form one piece. This was a free pattern that I found I think on the Lovecraft site because before I got into knitting like seriously this year, I didn't know about like popular knitting patterns and I just got whatever I could for free. And I didn't really realize all of the different types of construction that could be in sweaters. So you have like raglan seamless sweaters, you have seamed sweaters. So anyway, yeah, I think it turned out really nice. I like the colors, but I think maybe they look a little bit like a kid's sweater. Like the white is just a little bit too bright and so is the blue, and I think if it was a little bit more muted, it would look a little bit more sophisticated, which is what I wanted. And another thing that I didn't realize is that I bound off the collar of this too tightly, so I can get it over my head, but it's a little bit tight. And again, because this was knit in acrylic yarn, it just doesn't feel the nicest. I know it's not going to be like super warm like wool is. And also the first time I washed it when I put it through the dryer, it came out and like all of the hairs on my arm like stood up because it was so staticky. So it's just like not really a good feeling. It was a great learning sweater. And I think for my like first ever finished sweater, it came out pretty nice. But ultimately, I don't know that I will be wearing this one. So I will probably just donate it. Moving on to my second piece, which again, I used stash acrylic yarn and I made this little crop top. And I really like this shape of tank tops. I love when tank tops kind of like go in like this and then it's almost like a halter top, but not quite. The shape reminds me a lot of the very popular camisole number no. five pattern, but this pattern is done in brioche stitch. So it's like really squishy and there's quite a lot of fabric in there. It looks like a small garment, but it's actually pretty thick. And because I knit it in acrylic, it doesn't breathe very well, which is not great for a summer garment. And also because I felt that it was a little bit 
see-through when I was knitting it. Like if it's stretched, you could see right through it. I went in and made this stripe in the middle here where I held a double with some fingering weight sock yarn that I had in my stash to make this little stripe. So that helps a little bit with the coverage because where that falls is exactly where I would need a coverage. But I don't really like the feeling of this because it is acrylic and I just think it's too thick that it's not practical as a summer garment. It was fun to learn some new techniques and again, I just consider this kind of like a practice piece for me. So yeah, now that I have those two pieces out of the way, since those are pieces that came out but not quite like what I would have liked, I'm gonna set those aside. I will give these two garments away. And then I'm gonna move into the pieces that I'm actually really excited about that I finished this year. So next I have this tank top camisole. This is camisole number two by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I knit this in Knitting for Olive Merino in the color Dusty Olive. I think this knit up really beautifully. I've been wearing it a lot. It took me so long to knit this and I thought that it was because I was just like a really slow knitter, but this is probably like the first real pattern with like really nice yarn that I decided to knit up. And the Knitting for Olive Merino is like a light fingering. It's very, very thin and you're knitting this on thin needles and it's also done in ribbing, which takes forever. This piece really took me quite a bit of time and since it's knit from the bottom up, honestly, I just got like kind of bored and wanted to get on with it. So I knit this quite short. It's pretty much like a crop top on me, which I think is fine. I do like crop tops quite a bit. I think it is probably like my preferred fit for most tops for me. But the thing with this is the Knitting for Olive Merino is 100% merino wool. And although I've read that merino wool is really good for the summer because it actually can wick moisture and it doesn't feel wet when you're wearing it, it's still wool. And I live in a place where it gets very hot and humid during the summer. And I still just feel like it's a little bit too warm for the summer. Another thing is I was planning on wearing this tank top without a bra just because I don't like wearing bras, but I feel like when I wear it without a bra, like the shaping of like this area is kind of weird on my body or maybe like with where it sits on my body. So it looks kind of weird. So I end up having to wear a bra with it anyway. And I think what I will use this piece for a lot is sort of like as an underlayer in the fall or winter. So I can wear this instead of a bra, almost like as if it was a bralette, and I can layer with it, which I do quite often. So it'll be good under like looser t-shirts or even sweaters, but it feels like a little bit of a shame that it's such a nice piece that took me so long and I'm just like wearing it under stuff. But I thought it was a very beautiful knit and I was very happy with myself for finishing this, especially as one of my first like really nice garments. Another tank top that I knit is this Lazy Daisy top from Rachel Kurahara. It's just a very simple cropped tank. And after you knit that up, you can embroider daisies on it. The daisies that I embroidered are very different from the ones that she had in the pattern. She had more of like an outline daisy, but I liked a more solid daisy. So I went with these little daisies that I think are so cute. The only thing is they're quite thick. So on the other side, I can really feel like quite a bump on them, which is not the most comfortable. And this tank was really fun for me to make because this yarn is a 100% cotton yarn and I had tried dyeing it for myself the first time because I was getting really into like natural dyeing this summer because we have a really big garden and we have a lot of flowers and things that I wanted to try dyeing with. So this yarn I originally dyed with blackberries and it came out a really light lavender color. So I have a swatch of the original yarn. You can see that light lavender color, but obviously it is not that color anymore. When I washed it and I think I put it through the dryer the first time, the lavender turned into kind of like a light tan, not quite this color, but it had turned into a tan and then I was like, okay, I will just re-dye the entire tank top and I tried dyeing it with some pokeweed berries that grow like crazy on our property and they have a very, very bright, vibrant fuchsia color. And I thought, okay, surely those are going to stain 
this at least a little bit and get me a little bit of that purple color. I know that berries are not really the most like color or light fast thing that you can dye with, but I wanted to try it out because I had already knitted up and the color had faded. So I tried that and when I first dipped it into the dye pot, it was beautiful. It was like the most vibrant like magenta color and I knew that a lot of that color would wash out, but I thought that some of it would stay, but unfortunately not really. It kind of like deepened this tan color and I just left it at that. I decided I'm not gonna try and dye this again and I'm just gonna leave it with this like beige tan color. And it's nice that at least the second dye attempt that I did darkened the color a little bit because then when I embroidered these daisies on it, the white would stand out a little bit better if the tan was a little bit darker. So yeah, that's the story with this tank top. But even though like the main purple color didn't work out well, the center of these daisies actually is another yarn that I dyed, and I dyed these with Coreopsis flowers, which is a really good dye plant. I've dyed quite a few skeins with Coreopsis so far, and it gives you this really beautiful like golden yellow color. Speaking of that Coreopsis dyed yarn, I had a couple of other skeins of cotton yarn that I had dyed into that yellow golden color, and I made this pair of light summer shorts. But the reason I don't have it to show you here today is because I ended up frogging the entire thing after I made it. I will put some clips of what it looked like. I just wasn't really happy with the fit. I think that there could have been more shaping in the pattern that wasn't included, maybe like some German short rows in the back because it was knit pretty much symmetrically front and back, but obviously most of us have more volume in the back and I just felt like it needed a little bit more shaping that the pattern didn't include. I also didn't like the rolled hem, so I tried adding ribbing on one side of the shorts to see if I liked that better. But ultimately the shorts were just like too big for me so I ended up frogging the entire thing and I am going to revisit that in the fall and see if I'm going to re-knit it and try and make it smaller and tweak the pattern a little bit or just create something completely different. But I wanted to throw that in there because I did technically finish those shorts, I just ended up frogging the entire thing after. But those were really fun because I did knit it with yarn that I had dyed myself that I think came out a really nice color. Moving on to a t-shirt. This is the Open Edge Tee by Jessie Made Designs. And I knit this in Saniscarn Mandarin Petite, which is a 100% cotton yarn. And I think this color is just like the natural undyed cotton color. I really like this t-shirt. I think it's a great layering piece. Again, it is kind of like a cropped fit for me. So I like to wear my camisole number two under this and then layer this on top. It also works really nice on top of dresses. So yeah, I really like this. It's a nice staple. It has some really nice slip stitch details, both along the collar and the bottom hem. I think that the fabric you get is a little like loose and see-through, so I would only wear this on top of something else. So that's something to take note of, but other than that, I do really like this t-shirt. Next, I have the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, and this is the Ranunculus, and I knit this in Quince & Co. Finch. Actually, I have the tag right here. This is what I knit it in. The color is Sage. And I only had two balls of this yarn. I got it on sale at my local yarn store and together it was 440 yards and I was trying to find a pattern that used a smaller amount of yarn that wasn't like an accessory like hats or gloves. I really wanted to make like a piece of clothing or a garment from it. And a lot of people got away with using the amount of yardage that I had. So I tried it out. I did end up with like literally like a few yards left of yarn, so I had like the exact amount for this, but I will say that this ended up being a lot smaller than I thought it would. Most people that knit the ranunculus talk about how oversized it is and how you don't really need to gauge swatch or anything like that because it will just be oversized and fit pretty much everyone, but mine turned out really small. I'm actually a pretty small person, I think. Like I would normally knit an extra small in most things and sometimes they're even still too big and this thing is so tiny on me and I blocked it quite aggressively too to like try and make it bigger because I wanted that oversized look I really like that look I think it is flattering for my body type so that's what I wanted and I ended up with just like a fitted cropped t-shirt 
So I think the pattern is beautiful. That yoke detail is very nice, but I think I will have to knit this again make sure I have more yardage so that I can knit a bigger size. And I really wanna do a ranunculus with long sleeves, kind of like a sweater, and I want it to be oversized. So I'm gonna have to knit this again. I think it's still a really nice piece and I like it a lot. I really like this color. I love like cool blue colors, but it just didn't turn out quite as oversized as I was hoping for. So this yarn is 100% wool, which probably is not ideal for like a t-shirt. So I think that this is going to be more of like a summer and fall piece. So yeah, once it gets just a little bit cooler, I'm gonna be wearing this a lot. I think today it's like 90 degrees, so I cannot wear this outside just yet, but I am looking forward to it. I think the color as well is really good for spring and fall. All right, now I have some accessories to go through. First, I have this pair of fingerless mittens which are a very practical thing to have. I knit this in some yarn that I got from a local farm. We were at that farm because they breed Nigerian dwarf goats and next year my husband and I are planning on getting two Nigerian dwarf goats. So that was a really fun little excursion for us and I got some yarn out of it as well. So yeah, that was a really fun day. So I knitted this in a local yarn that is 50% sheep's wool and 50% alpaca. The sheep fiber comes from the farm that I visited and the alpaca fiber comes from another local farm. So I thought that that was really cool. I actually have a skein of it on my pegboard here. This is what it looks like. What I really love about this yarn and about a lot of alpaca fibers is that there are so many different colors when it comes to alpaca and this is completely undyed. It's just the natural color of the sheep's wool and the alpaca. And I love that beautiful gray color. This yarn was very different from a lot of yarn that I've worked with before because it is very rustic and it's definitely a little bit more on the itchy side. So originally I was going to make a hat, but after I made like the band of the hat, I tried it on my head and it was just so itchy on my forehead. So I decided to make these gloves instead because I thought it would be nicer to have something a little bit more rustic for around my hands when I'm doing a lot of stuff. Hopefully that will hold up really nicely. This was a free pattern that I found online. I will link it down below. And yeah, I just think it's a really nice basic winter staple. Really cool that I was able to use local yarn from a local farm and visit the sheep as well that it came from. Next, I have a very, very hefty winter sweater. This is definitely not a summer garment. This is the sweater number nine by My Favorite Things. I knit this in Knit Picks Swish, which is a superwash wool. I bought this yarn before I like knew about superwash versus regular wool. I'm really hoping that this holds up well. Obviously, I haven't worn it yet because it's way too hot. And this yarn is a worsted weight, it says. And I actually held this yarn double with this sweater because I had knit a gauge swatch and it just looked like too airy for me because I do get very cold and I wanted like a very, very warm sweater. So I held the yarn double and I ended up with such a hefty sweater. Like this is a heavy, heavy sweater. I think I used like 11 balls of yarn that were 50 grams each. So this thing weighs a lot and I did kind of run out of yarn. So it's a little bit shorter than I'd like. Um, I blocked it out to be a little bit longer. I'll really have to see how this wears since I haven't worn it too much. I do love the raglan increased details on this sweater. And the only other thing I'm unsure about is because it's kind of like a turtleneck and because I held the yarn double and it's like very thick and chunky, I don't know if I like love the feeling of that much yarn around my neck. It feels a little suffocating for me. So what I was thinking is if I end up not liking it, I'm just gonna fold over the collar and make it more of like a normal sweater collar. So we'll see how that goes. But I really enjoyed working on this sweater after I had worked on that other sweater that I did that was a seamed sweater. Doing a sweater that was just like a raglan seamless sweater was really nice. It was a lot easier. And yeah, I just didn't realize that that was a thing that you could do back then, but I'm glad that I learned. I think this guy will keep me really warm during the winter. And it's just in like a nice basic 
gray color. I think the color is called Squirrel Heather. It's like gray, but it has some hits of like warmer tan brown flecks in it. So I think it's very nice. Next, I have a pair of socks that I made. And these socks are actually made with yarn from other socks that I had made before that were too big on me. So I frogged them and repurposed the yarn to make these socks. So back when I first started knitting socks, I didn't really realize that socks should have a negative ease, which means that they should be a little bit smaller than your foot so that when you wear them, they stretch out. So when I made my first few pairs of socks, they were all too big and I didn't really realize that. I just thought that they were gonna be like comfy socks, but if you try to wear them in shoes, they fall off. And also the looser your socks are, the quicker they wear out. So I decided that since I wasn't really wearing my hand knit socks, which was such a shame, I recycled the yarn. I took apart my socks, which was very sad to do, but I think it ended up being up for the best because I like these new socks a lot more. So this was knit in Knit Picks Stroll and the yarn has held up really well. Even though they had already been knit into socks before, I had worn those socks a few times and then I pulled it apart and re-knit it into these socks. It still looks really nice. It still looks almost like brand new. So I really like this sock yarn and I know that a lot of people do as well. So I knit a heel flap and gusset sock and the heel is a slip stitch heel. And then I ran out of yarn at the end. So this is yarn from another sock that I had and I just did the toes of this sock with that yarn since I didn't have enough. And I really like the construction of this sock. The pattern that I followed is a free one from Summerly Designs, I believe. It's called the I'm So Basic Sock. And in the past, I had only done toe-up socks with, um, with a wrapped heel, I believe it is. It's the ones that like have a line down the heel over here. But I like this construction a lot more with the heel flap. I think it fits my foot a little nicer and I think that it'll hold up really well too, especially because I plan on making socks for my husband and he always wears through his socks in this area where the back of his heel hits his boots. So I think it's nice that I learned this new sock construction and I will probably be using this for all of my future socks. So I'm really happy with those socks and how they came out and I'm already working on another pair of socks right now. Last piece, this is the 10th piece that I'm showing you and it is the Boyfriend Beanie from Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern and I knit this in Knit Picks Palette in Pumice Twist, which is a fingering weight, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And I love the way that this came out. It's just a nice basic beanie. It has like a nice snug fit. And I like how it's like the heathered black and white color. I have some of the yarn here. This yarn is actually two different colors that are plied together. It's a really beautiful yarn, but it was kind of a pain to work with because the way those two separate plies are plied together, it's kind of loose and you really have to make sure you catch both of those strands. Otherwise it just like kind of splits a little bit, but I think it was worth it. I love the finished piece. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would because it's in fingering weight yarn and it's one by one rib. It took quite a while for me to knit this, but I'm happy with the result. I think I messed up a little bit on the decreases, but you can't really tell because it does have that like marled effect, which is really good that it hides my mistakes. Also, I got this yarn on sale when Knit Picks had like their summer sale and I only needed one ball of yarn for this hat and I had some extra and I paid like $2.25 for that ball of yarn. So I got this hand knit 100% wool hat for $2.25 because the pattern was free, the yarn was on sale. I just think that's such a steal. And I have a whole nother ball of this left, so maybe I'll make another one sometime and give it away as a gift. I think that beanies are a great thing to give as gifts. So I was really happy that I was able to get a whole hat out of that yarn that I got at a steal. So those are all of the things that I knit this summer. I've been doing quite a bit of knitting, as you can probably tell. And I think that's going to continue on as we get more into the fall. I'm planning on doing another video next week where I talk about the things that I'm planning to knit for the fall and maybe even the winter. I already have a few patterns in mind and even the yarns that I want to use with them. And I've started one of those projects as well. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll be putting that video out soon. 
But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and seeing everything that I knit this summer. Let me know what you've been working on in the comments down below and I'll see you again next time.